So this video will introduce screen printing. Um, we'll start with a print that was made by Rebecca Morgan as part of a visiting gig that she did with us a few years ago. Uh, this is a 17 layer screen print. Uh, one of the things that will often distinguish screen printing is we use a film positive to expose the screen. So in this case, for each color, a film positive had to be made to expose the screen. You can think of a film positive as a drawing on transparent film. Um, the drawing needs to be opaque where you want it to print and transparent where you don't want it to print. Um, and then the layers are printed in a certain order, very often with the darkest last as the key layer, but not always. So Rebecca made 17 individual film positives. Also, you can think of those as drawings, but each one was just for a specific color. Then each one of those is exposed onto a screen and the ink is chosen mixed and it's printed. So this is the final print. Um, and when you look close, you can see like, oh, okay, there's uh, like this kind of pink right here. She had to make a film positive drawing that would be dark just where she wanted that pink to print. And you can see like, oh, there's some there, there's some on his tongue, there's some on the nipple, various parts of her arm. You can look at the yellow and you can say, well, she had to make a film positive drawing for that bright yellow of the woman's hair. Um, do you see the yellow anywhere else? Well, his teeth are yellow, but that's a very different yellow. That has a lot more ochre in it. So that was a different layer than this. So really for the hair, the film positive drawing was dark only in the hair, nowhere else. Other times, you can, you can spot how she had to draw little bits in lots of different parts of the image. The blue was pretty much just for the shirt, even though there's a few different blues in there uh, for different layers. Uh, but the blacks and the dark grays, that's when she started to do like a finished drawing. So, you know, there's some up here, but there's lots down here and lots in other parts too. So slowly those layers are built up and the final key layer is printed on top, but a total of 17 layers of ink. Um, so the richness of this comes from the fact that it's many layers printed one on top of the other. Um, another, the, the idea of layers might be a little more evident in this one. This is a, a, a duo of artists who refer to themselves as Midwest pressed press being like a you know, printing press and, and pressed being the pressure that is used to make prints. This is a screen print though. Uh, Midwest Pressed is two guys, Aaron and Tim. Um, here they're just using their initials. And in this imagery, it's a unicorn, except it's many different drawings of unicorns. And then they, these many different drawings are each exposed to their own screen. And then they're printed one on top of another for this particular print. So if you look at like this magenta right here, you can see it's a particular drawing of a unicorn and it continues. But by the time you get over here, it's lost in all the other layers. Sometimes the layer that they're printing has pretty broad, solid shapes. And sometimes it's just line work. So at the edges and the periphery, you can see individual details like the blue horn of the unicorn right here and the, the head of the blue layer of the unicorn. And you can see just enough to know that the, the unicorn drawing for the blue is similar but a different shape than the unicorn drawing for this magenta. And the same with the purple and the same with all these others. Then there's this overall mass that is produced from the accumulation of all these drawings uh, that you can read unicorn, but it's like, 
I don't know, a sort of futurist, like unicorn dancing or in motion or whatever. But, um, but yeah, so they've, it's a little easier to sort of distinguish that each of these is a layer and that each one is printed separately, one on top of another. Another way, so this, this is an artist, uh, Ryan Christensen. He's a contemporary artist uh, in the US. I think he's based out of Chicago, maybe now New York. But um, so if you look at this and you think, well, this is a black and white image, but it's got a lot of grays. Now, if it were just black and the white of the paper only, maybe it would be one layer of ink. But screen printing doesn't always look rich enough if it's just the one layer of ink. So we, in screen printing, we often use multiple layers to sort of start to achieve the richness. Now, stylistically, Ryan wanted this to look, he wanted it to be a black and white image, but he still wanted the richness from grays. He wanted the black and white because he's often referencing these sort of early 20th century animations, cartoon animations. Um, and so he wanted to ev evoke that. But he still wanted that richness that comes from multiple layers. So they, uh, they printed a whole bunch of grays in this. Um, and that's what's, what's making it really uh, have a rich surface. Now this one, it's, it's kind of hard to reverse engineer, and it really is a brilliant print. Um, but the way this is maybe made, because I have not asked Ryan about this, but there's, here's my theories or my attempt to reverse engineer it, and that is that, that this is a kind of reduction print. But, and there's two basic ways that you can approach reduction printing and screen printing. One would be, and as is the case here, that he has the film positive drawing that he alters as he exposes individual screen, individual screens for individual layers. So he might start, if you, if you look and you think like, okay, here, this white right here might be a white layer of ink it might be the white of the paper. My guess is that that is a white layer of ink that is slightly different from the white of the paper because the white of the paper is, is a pretty bright white that's a little cold, whereas this is not quite as bright white and cold as the margin. So I think this print started by a solid rectangle of white ink. And when they printed that first layer, it was everywhere. So that was just a big rectangle flat of, of pretty much white ink. And then the second layer is this light gray that you start to see the speckles of in here. So this gray right here. And so the first might have been a solid, the film positive was solid uh, black rectangle. And then he goes back and he starts to scrape away ink from the film positive where he wants this first layer of white to remain visible. And then he burns another screen and prints this light gray. And once that's printed, then he goes back to the film positive, works on it some more, removes scra scrapes away, and prints a slightly darker gray. And so if you look at an area like this character's head right here, it's a kind of a sphere, and he wanted to show it with the changing of the light. So there's a kind of a highlight here to much darker there. You can't have that rich change of value if you're in screen printing if you're only gonna print one layer. So each of these grays is another layer. And he's also mixing it with, and you can just sort of see some of the sort of line work from that is a result of scratching away the black ink from the film positive. Um, now, while you're doing all that, if you look at these comical sketches of the nudes, this was probably fully scraped away, but then he drew back into it positive. So he's drawing with some kind of litho pencil or something in these areas. So you can treat the film positive in a reduction screen print like this 
you don't have to just scrape away existing drawn image, you can also add back. So you can go back and forth. You can scrape away something you've drawn, and then you can draw more. The fact is that you're changing the film positive between each exposure of a new screen. Now, in the video, of course, you won't be, you can't touch this, but if you ever get the chance to see this print in person, and if you feel the edge right here, this, where the dark line is right there, there's a significant rise in that ink that is readily discernible with your finger. And that is distinctive of reduction printing in the sense that underneath the dark are all the other grays. And that's why the dark line right there is a low relief because it's many layers of ink. It's all these grays stacked up. And the same is true for this. Underneath this dark is all the other grays underneath. That distinguishes reduction printing because all these layers are being printed on top of a previous layer. And that does help um, with the richness as well. So reduction screen printing is an option. And last, I'm going to show you one of my little cake images, which is a screen print. Um, the film positive material to make this is Rubylith. That's it. Um, there are one, two, three, four, five, six layers that are individually printed on this. This outer portion here is two layers. Each layer is a split fountain. The first layer goes, uh, the squeegee goes like this, so that there's one color down here and another color up here. I think I went green to yellow. Squeegee went this way. Second layer, squeegee goes this way. The ink is very transparent, and it goes from blue to transparent base to a little bit of orange. So here you're seeing orange on yellow, but here you're seeing orange on green. Here you're seeing blue on green, but here you're seeing blue on yellow. So with just two layers of ink, I'm, I'm achieving this kind of infinitely shifting set of colors within that. And then I print each of these three uh, portions of the inside of the cake, and then the final layer is this entire shape where there's a slight bit of shadow uh, done with a, as a split fountain that makes this a little bit darker than that right there. Um, and this is on translucent Yupo. Uh, and so it's this kind of frosted, non-traditional paper. And the nice thing about that is, in this case, I can print fluorescent orange on the back. And that way, when it's framed, that orange actually helps produce a color glow around the form on the edge. That's quite fun. Okay. okay.